you built 20 plus million followers. How? So I just picked up a camera, started vlogging my family, and then just one thing led to another. A lot of people working here vlogging, you know, I think I was definitely one of the first ones to like put Dubai on vlogs and like a lot of these car videos specifically. Then one car video blew up, like in the first week it got like four million, and then just the channel blew up. Yeah. I made sure like as soon as I made money, I bought my own Rolls Royce. Yeah. What's the most you've made in a day now? They definitely have made like 100,000. Honestly, I don't know how much money I make. What, because you make so much? I, I think because I spend so much. Oh, okay. I watch Mr. Beast content, I love his content. And I was like, no one's doing it in the Middle East, you know? Why don't I do his type of content in Arabic and just like change it up a little bit, right? I did it and then it just started blowing up. In this episode, I interview Mo Vlogs. We talk about how a broke kid who dropped out of uni became a multi-millionaire being a content creator. How to live your dream and go viral. Mo, how on earth did you build 11 million YouTube followers, 6 million in Arabic, 4.4 million on Instagram, and you're not even 18 years old? Oh, damn. <laughs> a bit older than 18 now, but. Yeah. 27 years old? 27 now. <sighs> that is like... impressive. First off, wow, Thank congratulations. You. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, by the way, on the podcast. Super Pleasure. excited. We, we literally found out about this an hour ago. Just yeah. Pulled up, you know, <laughs> let's, let's go do the podcast. Yeah, we've flown out from London. Wow. Just for today. Just one day. Yeah, we've got Andrew Tate after you. Wow, exciting. Yeah, and then we're flying back. Damn, that's good. That's big. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. Tate's an interesting guy. Yeah. He's popping right now. Should we talk about him first? <laughs> I don't mean, yeah. We could. What do you think about Andrew Tate? I think he's interesting. Look, I think he's very controversial, you know, but I... I I think he tries to be controversial. I don't think he, he's doing it accidentally, you know? Um, so you think I, it's a strategy, a play? Yeah, 100%. Like, he, he said this, but obviously I think with, when people see things online, they don't like actually check everything. Like, I think when he first like, started blowing up, he actually came out and said it online. He was like, I put a plan together to take over TikTok and I executed, you know? Yeah. So I think if you actually like listen to what he's saying, he's already said it, like, I did this. I knew what I was doing. Mm. But obviously, um, Things have blown up for him. It's crazy. Why? And I think everyone's trying to be Andrew Tate right now. You know, like as soon as he started that whole like manly persona, like every single person on TikTok was like just quoting everything he says yeah. and just trying to be aggressive with it. So he mm. started a whole another wave of kind of people. Mm. And why do you think he's so popular? Because he's controversial. Very controversial. What's controversial about him? I think he, like I think he just says a lot of things that are, like annoy a lot of people. Um, Obviously, some things that, I mean, I haven't seen everything, you know, uh, but it's I, I know. It's impossible to see. I mean, <laughs> there's so much, but like, obviously, I like when he talks about just like motivating yourself, stuff like that. But obviously, I know he talks about a lot of women stuff that have like made a lot of women mad, <laughs> you know, a lot of, um, including actually like, I think my own sister was mad at some stuff he said. She was like, oh, he said this or that. And I was like, listen, I don't know. That's not, I'm not even looking at that stuff. I just purely watch things I want to watch, you know? Mm. Yeah. And so how did you build 20 plus million followers on social media? Um, I think I just got into it because I, I was like, when I started YouTube, I was like, a, I'd say a nerd, you know? Like I just used to like watch videos a lot. And then I was like, oh, I like this. Uh, there was actually a YouTube couple back then. It was like prank versus prank. They used to like prank each other. And I used to just watch them every day. And I was like, this is fun. Like, I like this, you know? So I just was like, and they used to vlog every day as well. I used to watch it with my family. Like, you know, when you had like dinner back in the day and you just put like a YouTube channel on. So I was like, I want to start doing this. Like, so I just picked up a camera, started vlogging with my family. And then just one thing led to another and just. And how old were you when you started? I think like 22. So yeah, 21, five, 21 maybe. Okay, so you've been in the six years. Yeah, six years, I think. Wow, you could do a degree for six years at university and be a hundred grand in debt. Yeah, no, that's another thing to talk about. Yeah, so honestly, uh, one of the big reasons I started is I, I hated studying. I, I was smart. Like, don't get, like, get me wrong. Like, in, in the UK, like, you know, you have A levels. Like, I was a top student. Like, I had three A stars and an A, but I hated it. I was like, this is not for me. Like, it's cool, but I'm just memorizing a book. And I was good at memorizing the book because I was getting good grades, but I was like, this is not like, I don't care about these atoms or, you know, when you do physics or like, the, <laughs> yeah. like I didn't care. Like I didn't, someone else could. So for me, it just wasn't the thing, you know, I, I just liked doing other things. Yeah. So in six years, you built 20 plus million followers. Yeah. 
How? I think, so I started blogging. So I was in university. I was miserable. I hated it, literally. I was just like, I'd go there. I'd play games on my phone the whole lectures, you know, like I just, I wasn't doing Snake, it. do you remember Snake back in yeah, the day? Yeah, like playing Snake. <laughs> yeah. And I remember I'd tell myself like, hey, like back in the day, I think, I don't know how much university is now, but it was like 9,000 pounds a year. I was like, I'm going into debt 9,000 pounds a year to come to university to play games. <laughs> like, what am I doing? You know, like I want to do something with my life. So I was like, at that point, uh, my first year of university finished and I decided I was going to take a gap year. I was like, okay, you know what? If you want to leave university, prove to yourself that like you are gonna work. Because a lot of people nowadays, like, there's like thousands of YouTubers that say, oh, university, you don't need it, or you just get to work. And then obviously kids nowadays watch it and say, yeah, but they don't actually want to do anything. They just want to just leave, right? It's just a reason to show their family, oh, look, you know, <laughs> Mo Vlogs is telling me university is not good, or <laughs> Gary Vee is telling yeah. me university sucks. Well, no, that's not the case, you know. Mm. Um, if you're just gonna leave to leave, then you probably should go back to university, you know? Um, but I was like, I told myself, I'll take one gap year, and with a gap year, you can return where you left off. And I was like, in this gap year, if you can prove that you are working and you're doing something that goes right, that you don't need to come back. And I hated it, so it was like a, it was like a great motivation. Like you can, in one year, if you can prove that you become YouTuber, so I started daily blogging. I was like, you know what? Your goal is you're gonna release a vlog a day. And then, Summer holiday came, I think when I started like off my break, I was at like a thousand subscribers. And then during the summer break, I went to like 20,000, I think 25, 30,000. And that's when like September came around, but I'd already taken a gap year, but it was, it was good progress. And then we started making car videos. And then Dubai at the time was like, a lot of people weren't here vlogging. You know, I think I was definitely one of the first ones to like put Dubai on vlogs and like a lot of these car videos specifically. So people were like, oh my God, that's Dubai. Wow, this is great. And everyone heard about Dubai, but no one saw Dubai online. So I think I kind of got lucky to a sense, like right place, right time. Um, and yeah, then one car video blew up. I remember I put like one video out and like every news site covered it, you know? It was like in the first week, it got like 4 million. Wow. Like even now I couldn't pour 4 million in one week, you know? Like yeah. everyone covered it, so. Um, Can you remember what that video was? Yeah, it was called Rich Kids of the Middle East. Uh, so I realized when I'm doing these videos, like everyone had this like image, obviously Dubai and money and cars and stuff, but no one had seen it. So I just put like the videos, so people, what people wanted to see, right? So, and then just poof, the channel blew up. Yeah. yeah. And how did that feel? It was crazy. It was like, I remember like, I think once I hit 100K subscribers, the next month I already doubled the channel. And then from there I was growing like 200K subscribers a month, you know? So I was like 100K, then 300, then 500. Wow. So it just started like growing quick. And because I was daily vlogging, it was like, it was going fast. And did you have um, ad revenue turned on at that point, but as you blew up? Um, I think after, like, I think after a while, like I'm pretty sure it was on at one point. I can't remember when. Um, but did the money start to get big at that point? Yeah, of course. I, I think like obviously the first couple of months, it was like a few thousand, then you go to like, the tens and then it starts growing from there, right? So um, I remember when I started, my goal was to make $200 a day. Cause I was like, if I, no, actually no, sorry. It was a hundred dollars a day. Cause <laughs> I was like, if I can make a hundred dollars a day, then I have enough money to spend on the videos and then do cool <laughs> things. So yeah, I remember I, I told my mom like $25,000 a year is my target. Anything over you get to keep. So, Are you still on that deal? Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're renegotiating that deal right now. She was like, I remember when you told me that? Yeah. I was like, mom, you know? No, but I take care of her, you know? Yeah. I made sure, like, as soon as I made money, I bought her a Rolls Royce, you know? I love the Wow, family. you bought so, her yeah, a Rolls Royce. means a lot to me. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I bought my mom a Rolls Royce. Next goal is a house. Next goal is more. Yeah. Yeah. So you, your first target was $100 in a day. Yeah. What's the most you've made in a day now? I mean, I, I don't know like, exactly in a day. Obviously, like, if you have like a brand deal and they pay you on the same day, does that count? Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, they definitely have made like 100,000, I guess. In I, a day. I think that's, yeah, that's the most I can remember. Like, yeah. But I don't think, I think it was payment for a couple of days, but I just got that on one day. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if that's when the invoice one day. got paid. Yeah, yeah, like I just remember that money just hit the account. Yeah. Obviously, I'm sure there's been like bigger money, but like maybe it was for like six month contracts or like yeah. 
But I remember that one was like for a very short thing. So, so what would a good year make you nowadays? Honestly, I don't know how much money I make. What, because you make so much? <laughs> Not really. I, I think because I spend so much. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I genuinely spend a lot of money. What do you money. buy? Honestly, we, like, we spend a lot on the videos. Yeah. People don't understand how much money creation costs, do they? Um, especially like right now, I have an Arabic YouTube channel, which um, a lot of people don't know about because it's Arabic. You know, people watch my English content. Obviously, Give it a shout out. Yeah. It's Mo Vlogs Arabic or Arabic Mo Vlogs, one of those two. And then your English speaking is just Mo Vlogs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I watched, like, I'm not someone to like lie about it. Like I watched Mr. Beast content. I love his content. Yeah. And I was like, no one's doing it in the Middle East, you know? And definitely not in Arabic. And I already had an Arabic YouTube channel, which I was doing like kind of like vloggy stuff. Yeah. And then I was like, why don't I do his type of content in Arabic and just like change it up a little bit, right? And then I did it and then it just started blowing up. But the problem with Mr. Beast content is you need to spend a oh, lot of money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. So at the beginning, I was purely losing money, right? Right. Because I'm trying this content, which I need to give out money for. I need to spend a lot of money like making sets and. Mm. Like I remember I did a video with Orbeez or something like the Orbeez alone cost me like almost 30,000, you know? Right. Because there's a lot of Orbeez. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is getting expensive. But like, I believed it would eventually do good. And then mm. after a few videos, like it really took off. So. Yeah. So what would an expensive video cost you? Um, I think the most expensive video I did, I, I did the Squid Games. Um, in Squid Arabic. Squid Games in real life in Arabic. Yeah. yeah I think that cost just around just over a hundred thousand for one video yeah because yeah. i mean making the whole set yeah like uh um, do you not think what, what if this doesn't get views now the, the thing about that video is honestly i just wanted to do it so i did the numbers i was like for this one video i need to spend a hundred thousand and i have no idea how i'm going to make it back because arabic cpm is not quite as good as american cpm so it's not that i'm going to make it back through cpm but then I was like, you know what? I just like this video. I'm going to do this video, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then I did the video. And after the video, I was like, then I was like, okay, now I need a sponsor. But I already spent the money. So I went to like a ton of friends I had. I was like, look, this is the video. It's big. Do you want to sponsor it? And then- luckily, Oh, you hadn't released it yet. Yeah, I didn't no. release it yet. Yeah. I actually gen like, I genuinely edited the whole video and then took it to sponsors. I was right. like, look, this is the video. This is how much I spent. Like, you can do the math, you know? And yeah, we actually got a sponsor for it, so I, I covered that video. So the sponsor paid for the cost? Yeah. Any, any money on top did you get as well? I don't, I don't really think I made much money. No. Like it'd probably be like one, two, three thousand, nothing yeah. like crazy, but um, yeah, I was just happy to cover the video, yeah. you know? And how many new subscribers would a video like that get for you? Oh, that you? one got me like probably just alone 250,000 subscribers. Just wow. that one video, yeah. Maybe more, I don't know, I haven't checked in a while. Yeah. So, yeah. This sounds like um, living the dream. Yeah. Do you feel like you're living the dream? Honestly, I always tell myself, like, you, I need to always be appreciative. I am. I'm very appreciative of everything I have. But sometimes when you're just working so hard, it can just be hard to, like, sit and say, like, oh, wow, this is where I am. Because, like, I'm a workaholic. Like, I, I love working. Like, I'm day to night. Like, when I used to do the daily vlogs, it was, like, wake up 8 a.m., edit to 12, schedule the post, record the entire day, sleep, repeat, you know? So you edit your own content? Yeah, like I, I don't party, really. Like the only time I'd go to a party is if there's a rapper that I might be able to vlog with, <laughs> you know? Like <laughs> everything content. is like work, you know? It's not like I'm like, oh yeah, I wanna go party and yeah. be with girls. Like I genuinely couldn't care less. Like I'm kind of like an introvert. I like being alone, you know? Um, so I'm just a workaholic. Like, it doesn't excite me to go and party or like have fun or like I like working. That's my like, oh, yes, there's this content I can get or. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make it hard for dating? Yeah, it, definitely. It's like very hard. Um, go and tell us about it. Yeah, it, it's hard, like especially being in a I've been in relationships, obviously, but um, right now I'm not. Um, I think that's a big reason because I think girls want a lot more time and attention and then I'm obsessed with my work. So it's like, well, you care about your work more than you care about me. I'm like, no, like I, I, yeah. I don't, <laughs> but like, I just love working. So it's, it's hard to balance. But I think now, like in my life, I'm trying to figure out that balance. Cause yeah. I think at one point I was definitely like overworking like a lot. So what is balance? Does that exist? 
I, I don't know, like, I'm, I don't know if it's like a disease I have, like, I remember like my, my ex-girlfriend telling me like, enough is never enough for you, you know, it's like, you always want more, like, you, you're you never gonna like, just be happy, and I was like, I, I don't know, maybe. But someone might like that about you. Yeah, no, definitely, I think they definitely did like that about me even, I think that's a, a reason a lot of people do like that, but then, I always tell people like, let's say Elon Musk, I'm sure all of us would love to, like if we were girls, be with Elon Musk, right? <laughs> but then, because you'd be like, oh my God, he's so hardworking and he's so aspirational, whatever, whatever. But then once you're with him, the first six months is great. You're with a billionaire, you know? But then at one point, once you've lived that like high life, I guess, and you realize, wait a second, this guy's 24 hours in his factories and 24 hours working, you're like, uh, I don't know if this is what I signed up for, you know? Because not everyone's going to be as driven as you. So, yeah, definitely hard work makes relationships, some relationships harder, you know? So how do you find that balance? I mean, at one point, like, I would say I was literally sick. I remember I'd upload a video, watch the first 60 minutes, like, review, like, per minute. If it's not doing good, change thumbnail, change name, change everything. Like, I was literally, like, sick. I'd sit there like on my, and I would like stress, like I'd freak out, like, oh my God, it was really bad. Like, I think I was way too obsessed with like the views of that second. Hey, it's Rob, quick interruption. I hope you're enjoying the show. I don't know if you know, but I have more YouTube channels, including shorts channels. So make sure you subscribe below. Do you think though that being able to turn your passion into your profession is a great thing. I mean, 50 years ago, yeah. before our generations, people worked in the factory yeah. and down the coal mines. And now we get to express ourselves and talk about what we love to do and travel and film and chat yeah. and make a living out of it. Yeah. That's a pretty cool moment in time, isn't it? That we can do that. Yeah, definitely. Things of, like nowadays life is so much easier than before, you know? I, I think definitely everyone in this world is spoiled. <laughs> mm. Everyone, you know, way more than before, you know? Mm. So, yeah, as I said, we need to just appreciate it more. Mm. And what do you most appreciate about your life? Me, I'm just, like, I try and appreciate the simple things. Like, I'm happy, like, I can eat. I have a house, you know? I can pay my electricity bills. Like, just, I, I always try and, like, just appreciate these things, because those are the most important, you know? There's people in the world that don't have food. They don't have a house, you know? So, everything else, like, I really, don't care about, mm. you know? As, as long as my family's healthy, I have food, I have all the basic necessities, like, I say thank God. Because mm. <laughs> everything else is a bonus, right? Yeah, yeah. So you said earlier you like your own company, maybe a bit of an introvert, I think you used the word geek. Yeah. So how did you push yourself out of that comfort zone to be on social media every yeah. day on videos? Oh, uh, it was hard. Like, when I started YouTube, I remember, like, my first vlog, you can probably watch it, like, I was, I'd, I'd call myself weird. But like I was very like shy. I remember like I was in the car and my mom would like try and record me. And like if I thought another car was looking at me, I'd tell her, stop recording, stop recording. Like, I was really like shy, you know? But I think like you should definitely, if you love something, just try it and kind of like push out of your comfort zone. And I always tell people, like, just slowly push. It doesn't need to be like jump out of your comfort zone, you know? Like I always tell people if you're trying to start vlogging, just figure out a way. Like just first vlog at home then go somewhere outside which is a bit quieter like there's not many people just like slowly push yourself out of your comfort zone and then you'll figure it out right mm. so i always say like if there's something you want to do just just figure out how to start and it's just like you know how they say one step in front of the other and things will like definitely fall into place mm. so and nowadays it's so easy like everything is online like if you want to be a fitness guru or you want to have a six pack there's like 20 different videos to tell you how to get a six pack online it's just like do you actually want it bad enough right mm. so i think it's just figure out what you want and if you do want it bad enough like anything is achievable mm. like making money is very easy nowadays like there's 13 year olds that aren't to nfts and crypto like worth millions you know, as long yeah, as there's teenage billionaires now, isn't teenage there? Teenage billionaires, yeah. you know? So I think it's so easy to make money. It's so easy to, you know, get fit nowadays. Everything's just online. Mm. Are you still an introvert um, or has doing content given you more confidence? Or is there a Mo 
behind the camera and then a mo comes to life when the camera's on? Um, I think definitely I'm different on camera and off camera. You know, like I think especially for my like if I'm alone, I'm quiet. But I, I don't know if that's me well, being it'd be different. weird if you were noisy on your yeah, own. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> I, I meet people and, like, literally, I've just met them, said hi, and they're like, you're different. I'm like, I just said hi. <laughs> yeah. I, what, like, what do you want me to say? But they, they expect me to say, hi, how are you guys doing? Mm. I'm like, well, like, I don't have anything to say. I'm just saying hi, you know? Yeah. So I think definitely, like, on camera, like, I'm trying to say things, so I, I say them, you know? Uh, but, yeah, definitely I'm a bit more quiet in real life, so I won't shout out as much. Mm. But also, I tell people, like, vlogging is kind of like acting, you know? Um, if you see Will Smith in a movie and he starts yelling, I don't expect him to yell at me in real life. No, just slap me around the face. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't expect him to be, like, <laughs> Superman and start punching. Yeah. But, like, I know, I kind of, like, feel his personality, you know? Like, I know, okay, he's acting here and this is him and he's still a nice guy. But, mm. yeah, I'd say definitely. But also, am I an introvert still? Look, vlogging has given me confidence, but... I still do like being alone a lot. Like, mm. I don't know, I, I don't like being around too many people. Yeah. I don't know, it's just not my thing. Yeah, it's a good job that we only brought yeah, three just like of us. Three or four, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone says about being a creator, make great content. Yeah. But that is the most vague statement in the world. So what do you think makes great content? Honestly, I really believe that. And, and I'll tell you the biggest mistake I made in content my biggest mistake when I, like, obviously I started vlogging, I was, I was making tons of good videos. And my biggest mistake is when I cared about the money. And, I, and I'll tell you why, because I used to, like, generally when I started, obviously when you start, like, you don't know you can make money. You're just making content to make content. So it reached a point where now I was getting a lot of brand deals. Like, hey, we'll pay you this much money to, to plug this ad. And, and then it came to a point where... My mistake was I was taking too much money in the sense that it was ruining my content. You know, they'd say, hey, we'll pay you X amount, but like for two minutes of your video, like sit and do like a whole presentation about this water, right. you know? And people yeah. didn't care, you know? It's like, mm. it's nice to put it in a natural way. Like, hey, I'm drinking this water, boom, done. But like, if I start saying like, this has 72 calories and 300 That'd grams. That'd be some water. <laughs> and, and like, the thing is, the money was good, right? So, <laughs> yeah. hey, we'll pay you like X amount, like 50,000, just say a bunch of these things. And I'm like, well, this money does help, you know? So then you start like, just doing like, so many placements and videos, mm. and then people are like, oh, okay, another one, another one. Right. So I was taking a lot of, like at one point, I was taking a lot of brand deals. And I think that was my biggest mistake because I felt like I was like, oh, I just, it felt like I was selling out at that point. So that was my biggest mistake. So when I started the Arabic channel, I literally told myself, like, if I take any brand deals, it's purely going to be like the interest of the video. So like whenever I take brand deals, I say, number one, I'm giving you maximum 60 seconds. Number two, I want to put it in a way where it's fun. Like, I don't want to like sit and say, like, you know, something like long and boring. Like they've told me, they've, the one point was like, we want a three minute integration and great money, right? Like the videos get 10 million. So it's, I was like, nope, no thank you. I'm not gonna sit Your minutes. videos get 10 million views on yeah, average. 10 million views on average. So I'm not gonna sit there three minutes, as good as the money is. Like, imagine watching a three minute presentation in the middle of a video, right? Um, I was like, if it's a way where we can like naturally put it in, in a fun way, great. It covers the cost of the video. It helps with production, but I don't want to ruin the quality. So specifically with the Arabic channel, because it was something new I started, I kind of promised myself, like, you're not going to make that same mistake again. Like, mm. it first comes the content and the experience, like, the viewers get just making the video fun, and then the money. Right, and then does it get to a point where it gets easier to make the money because you've built the following? Exactly. The, so so yeah. that, that's, I think, one thing that, like, I guess me and a lot of creators were doing wrong. And, and I think someone like Mr. Beast really showed everyone how wrong we were. Like Mr. Beast with his first $10,000 sponsorship, he took the entire $10,000 and he gave it away, right? And everyone was like, oh my God, this guy's giving away $10,000. But obviously there was hundreds of influencers before him getting way more money. But you take the 10,000, you just keep it, right? <laughs> you enjoy it yourself. So I think he made everyone realize like if you reinvest the money into the content, 
like you're going to get more out of it later on mm. like maybe not now but obviously the reason someone like him would blow up is because he did it like without knowing that right he was the first one to start doing that and he was genuinely just giving away the money nowadays when people are giving away the money it's in hopes that they will be the next big thing right so i think people feel the energy you know mm. so i really realized like okay you know what if you actually really focus on the content you're going to get number one a stronger fan base because they're going to say hey look this guy genuinely just giving us the best content yeah and you know when you said like um making good content like everyone says make good content yeah. you're going to grow and i think what they mean by that is and something i've started to do is like if i'm making a video like sit and think how could it be better you know even if i have to spend more money like uh for example like when i did the orbies video like or mr beast when he does it like you could get 100,000 orbies or you could get a million orbies right now it just depends how much do i want to max out to make this video as crazy as possible but obviously you have to spend more money sometimes you have to go over your budgets but that's what they mean by like the best video cuz visually 100,000 and a million is a big difference right so it does make the video better like if we filled this room up with like this much worth of orbies or the entire thing the video would look so much cooler if it was the entire thing but are you actually going to like go over a budget to do that mm mm-hmm. So I think that's what they mean when they say make the best possible video just like push the boundaries spend the most money like if you can yeah and just do the craziest thing. So my brand is called Disruptors and um I mostly interview billionaires or big business people. Yeah. I am a businessman entrepreneur. Oh. How could we sex up our content and make it more fun when in reality a lot of it is how to type content? Um cuz if I spend a, a million on Orbeez I don't think that's going to yeah. make my <laughs> advice for your podcast. Yeah. I, I think definitely try and do different things. Um okay, I'll give you an idea that I had for my podcast, but you can take it. It's fine. Cool. Um I'd say like We'll give you the 10,000 sponsorship. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um like I always try and think like how can we you do something different, right? So let's say if I had a podcast like this, I'd take so and so billionaire and I'd bring a like you know those like lie detector machines like where they strap them up and like strap them up and just tell them like <laughs> would you sell your company for 100 million you know and like put them on the spot like do something where it's like whoa you know okay yeah <laughs> you know something a bit like intense or like yeah. ask them okay 100 million or your wife <laughs> you know so, something like <laughs> well that'd be easy for most of them yeah <laughs> yeah you know, like just think yeah. okay how can i like elevate or just like add it um and there's always ways to like do different actually there was one of my friends showed me some content recently which was really interesting it was actually kind of like podcasty um and it was just re- so they brought like two different type of people on it so it was like for example bringing a fitness vlogger and a food vlogger so someone that's into fitness and someone that's into eating a lot you know and they put them on the same podcast and then they have complete different like opinions right yeah. the food guy is like constantly just eating everything and the fitness guy is just telling him you're killing yourself. Yeah. So I just think of like ways to like do the podcast but like in different ways or like if you have a billionaire then put one of his employees on the video. Yeah. <laughs> and say, "Well, you're rich and you're not. <laughs> yeah. How does he treat you?" and I you know like something where it's a bit like I guess a bit more spicy. Yeah. What are you thinking, Harry? I like spicy. Yeah. yeah. Harry likes spicy. You know something to spice it up. Yeah. Yeah, just make it different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And people love like I guess controversy. Yeah. I mean, if you can get it out of them, sure, why not? Do you create controversy in your videos? I don't think so cuz my content really doesn't need it. It's yeah. just like crazy challenges. Yeah. Um yeah, and I'm really bad with the controversy stuff cuz I'm an emotional person. <laughs> so if I was involved in it, I'd probably like emotionally react to it like, "Oh my god, I don't I don't <laughs> yeah. mean that, you know." Yeah. Um uh, yeah. So I think just like you need to figure out what matches you. I actually getting back to the Andrew Tate thing. That's what I was saying like a lot of people are trying to like force themselves to be the next Andrew Tate. Yeah. Like okay, some people fit that persona and some people just don't. Mm. Like it's just that's how life is. Like if you're not someone that's like, you know, kind of like if it's not you to be that like aggressive masculine person, like stop trying, <laughs> you yeah. know? Like yeah. we can see it. Like it's not you. Like I always tell people that's not you. Like just stop it. <laughs> yeah. It just looks cringe at that point. Like Tate is Tate. Yeah. You can see that's him. Like mm. he's been doing that before he got famous. It's mm. not that suddenly he became like no, that was what he was doing and then he became famous for yeah. it, right? 
But then obviously every single person online like saw it. They're like, all right, now I need to be like that guy. They just turn on their cameras. If you're not doing this and you're not doing that, then you suck. <laughs> and it's like someone that's like just sitting there like kind of like awkwardly or like saying it in a weird way. Mm. Like, yeah, just do what you're good at. Like people, and I always say, this is one thing I always say is stop looking at other people's plates. Like, you know, like if you have food on your table, like stop trying to take from their plate. You know, like just figure out what you have in yours and just add to that, you mm. know? Because a lot of people like, let's say, if if you have a podcast, right? And they have no interest in a podcast. The second they see you doing good, it's like, oh, I need to do what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, it's cool, but do you like that? Yeah. Is that something you want to do, right? I mean, for, for entrepreneurs, it's really hard not to look at other people who are successful and want to do what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, like, really, like, before you actually start doing it, evaluate it, right? Like, see, like, for example, um, I love crypto. I like the idea of crypto. And then a lot of my friends, which are, like, very rich, Bugattis, private jets, and they all do crypto content, right? I love crypto, but the way they do their crypto content is they analyze graphs. I don't like that. (laughs) I, I really don't like that. Like, sometimes I like looking at it but I don't want to do that on a daily basis. But I do like making like videos about kind of the news. Like I, I love when I see news like, oh, a crypto whale bought this many Bitcoin. Like, mm. That stuff I care about. But I don't care about on a daily basis telling you the resistant points and stuff like that. So I always say like adjust it to your way. So I did make a crypto channel, which is doing pretty good. But the way I did it is number one, the things I like, like going to crypto people's houses and covering the lifestyle, which is something I do on my vlog channel anyways. Yeah. And secondly, when I make the crypto news videos, it's more like about stuff that's happening. Like, oh, Elon Musk bought a billion dollars of Bitcoin. So even though I know to make the most money, you have to do the the graph analysis and you know, Mm. that's what the crypto people watch, but that's not me, right? Yeah. How long can I fake it? (laughs) Yeah. Until people realize like, okay, this guy really doesn't care about graphs and stuff, so. Yeah. I think, yeah, you can look at it, but just how would you actually do it long term? How do you go viral? The easiest way to go viral is just doing something controversial. And that's what you see a lot of nowadays. Like someone goes and makes a crazy statement, like the Kanye West, like the Andrew Tates. (laughs) They say something crazy online. But how do you find the balance between expressing yourself and not copying others and saying no to the wrong things for you. But also, I, be, I bet you test thumbnails, I bet you test headlines, I bet you're always trying new hacks and tactics to grow your channel and your yeah. brand. So how do you find that balance? I mean, at one point, like, I would say I was literally sick. Like, I remember I'd upload a video, watch the first 60 minutes, like view like per minute. If it's not doing good, change thumbnail, change name, change everything. Like, I was literally like sick. Like, I wouldn't even say that's normal. Like, it was like a disease. Like, (laughs) I'd sit there like on my, and I would like stress, like I'd freak out. Like, oh my God, (laughs) normally in the first 10 minutes, I get 10,000 views, it's 9,000 or it's 8,000. And I, like, it was really bad. Like, I think I was way too obsessed with like the views on that second. But I think the bad thing is I was then, instead of like thinking about it of, hey, how do I make better content? It just became too much like, okay, I need this thumbnail. And then I think I started clickbaiting too much, right? Because if it didn't do good, well, let me just like mislead them a little bit and then it becomes more. And then you start going through that spiral of like, actually people start hating you because they're like, well, you, you're just clickbaiting us every time now. Like, because you start off like with a little bit and then more and then more and then more. And then I, I think that's where it starts going downhill. And then I realized that like, instead of me doing that, why don't I just actually focus on what's the best video I can make where I don't need people to click on it and just for that thumbnail, you know, people would actually start sharing the video. So I, I think I realized that at one point. So yeah, I think the best way to overcome that is just like, just take a breath, step out and look at the bigger picture for a second, you know? Because yeah, I think you can definitely get obsessed with like the, is it called the macro? <laughs> micro? Micro, Ma- yeah. yeah. You get obsessed with the micro instead of like yeah. the macro picture. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely something that I think it's just, you learn. Like I always say like, in five years, I'm definitely gonna know more than what I do now. Like in five years, I might think that me right now is an idiot, right? Because <laughs> you start learning more and more and more, right? Yeah. So that's what happens. How do you go viral? 
Viral. Um, I, I'd say viral. Uh, how did I go viral? How yeah. do you go viral? However you want to answer it. It's um, the Mo <laughs> Show. <laughs> um, I think going viral just, there's so many different ways. Um, Give us some tips. I think the easiest way is the easiest way to go viral is just doing something controversial. Something, and that's what you see a lot of nowadays. Like someone goes and makes a crazy statement, um, like the Kanye Wests, like the Andrew Tates. <laughs> uh, they say something crazy online. But that, I think that only really works if you're kind of already mm. relevant, right? Um, the second way is just doing something out of the box new. Uh, and, I, and I really tell people, like, I tell people that are getting into content, I'm like, the sad truth is no one actually cares about you. And that, that, that's the truth. Like, if you're watching Mo that wasn't Mo Vlogs, you, you don't care about me, right? You only care about me because now I have Mo Vlogs. But to get there is the difference. So I tell people, like, all right, you want to be a vlogger, for example. And some people are like, all right, great. Hi, guys. This is my cat, Bobby. No one cares about Bobby. Right, that's your cat, <laughs> but no one else cares about him, right? Yeah. So I say do things that other people are interested to watch. So realistically, that's what you need to do, right? Because um, if you're someone new starting out, you need to either start doing some content that relates to other people. For example, if you want to, uh, let's say, be a fitness YouTuber, your first content needs to either be some sort of like fitness tutorial that people would be searching up, like how to get a six pack in 10 minutes. It needs to be things that people search up mm. and that they can generally just come across your content. Um, so I think definitely to start getting an audience, you just need to start. I mean, the way I first started, like growing at the beginning, unless you're gonna get really lucky to just like have something really blow up viral, and you're just like, you did something crazy, you did something on TV. Some people nowadays are like, I guess, streaking football matches or going into supermarkets and doing something absurd, you know? Um, the other way is you just need to slowly grow it, right? Like I remember when I started YouTube, I would go and comment on other people's YouTube channels. Hey, I love your content. Can you subscribe to my channel, you know? And I, my aim was just get three subscribers a day, you know, just build some foundation on mm. So um, I think, yeah, there's a lot of ways to go viral, but nowadays the, the main thing is either doing something so crazy, so big, you know, controversial. Like you see it happen all the time, like new YouTubers that really like pop off. It's either that somehow they've sneaked into like some event or got associated with some YouTuber somehow or they, they bought a YouTuber's car from them and just got some like followers from there. You know, they just... There's so many ways. I don't think there's one or two ways, but mm. if you, I always say like, if you want to get viral, you'll find a way. Yeah. And that's the truth. Like if, if you sit there long enough and you're like, your one aim in life is to go viral, you'll figure out a way to go viral, you know? Mm. Do you have a creative process? How do you come up with ideas like lie detectors and all those things you s shared earlier? I think I just, me and friends just talk about things. I, I think if you have like, and I always say it's, it's a quote that I heard. It was like, if you're friends with four thieves, then you're going to be the fifth one. If you're friends with four millionaires, you're going to be the fifth one. If you're friends with four gymnasts, you're going to be the fifth one, right? And I think that's something that happens in life. Like, if all of my friends are millionaires, I'm probably going to be the next millionaire in the group. Yeah. If all of my friends are successful YouTubers, I'm probably going to be the next successful YouTuber. So. If you're around like-minded people, because that's that becomes your topic for the day, right? New content or what should we do? Um, so I definitely think it's important, like who you put yourself around. Like I remember when I was making the most money, all my friends were rich. You know, all mm. of them were rich. So I'd like see what they're doing, because then you start learning things from each other, right? Like you know something, they know something, and I think it's the same in YouTube. Like if you're around four or five other YouTubers or people that are trying to do YouTube, like. I might realize that, hey, thumbnails are a big deal. And I might tell you, I changed my thumbnail, my views went up, and then you start doing that. And he might realize that, oh, I made a, a 10 minute video and it did way better than a five minute video. And you start like sharing these in a circle and you actually all go up together. And I think I saw Mr. V said it somewhere. He was like, cause they told him like, do you keep it a secret? Like when you find out something? And he was like, no, like if I tell everyone it's better cause we all tell each other what works and we go up together. So I think being around people which 
are not like trying to hide everything. Like if you're like work together, it actually works a lot better than you know keeping secrets because that way you're just like not growing together. Mm. So yeah, mm. I think that's how I come up with ideas. I have like a good group of friends. We're all into content. We all tell each other ideas, you know. Yeah. And I think one mistake people make is they think that the world is small. It's huge. Like if I get a million views, that doesn't mean you can't get a million views, mm. you know. There's like seven billion people on the earth, or however many number it is now. I can't remember, but like, there's so much abundance and everything. Like we could all be like big YouTubers, and my neighbors can be big YouTubers, and their neighbors could be big YouTubers. Like there's so much space, you know. So some people they get caught up in like, like I guess no, I need to have everything, or like you know. Um, so yeah, just being around the right people. Mm. Should we finish on a quick fire round? Yeah, let's do a quick fire. All right then. I, I think I spoke a lot today. <laughs> That's great. I've really enjoyed this. So yeah. thank you, Mo. Um, how many cars you got? How many cars? I'd say like six. I can't remember, but probably six. What's the best car you've got? Um, my favorite is probably the SLS. Yeah, why? I think because it's like a collector's. The price goes up. It's kind of like an investment. How much are they now, roughly? What's their I value? Think probably like two hundred thousand dollars. Right. This is the basic one. Yeah. The black series are like 800,000, but I got the cheap one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and what car have you got that most people think is good, but you think it's a bit shit? Um, What's your worst car? My worst car? I don't know. Do I have a worst? Um, I like the Bentayga, but like, to be honest, it's not as comfortable. I, uh, it's nice, but like, yeah, I, I think it's average. It's mm. okay. I mean, it drops like a stone value-wise, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, the good thing about Was my Was it the cars, black one you pulled yeah, up? The yeah, the black one, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I buy them like at a good price. Yeah. Like, I have good relations with the dealership, so I don't really lose a lot of money. Right. Oh, yeah. because of your profile, they do your yeah, deal. Yeah, exactly. You know, I work with some promotion with them, so they give me like a good price. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there you See? go. That's the secret That's to the getting secret. rid of depreciation. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the most you've ever spent on one thing, the most outrageous purchase, biggest heinous waste of money? Waste of money? Or, or amount you've spent? I think just property. You think that's a waste of money? No, 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 no. no waste of money. That's, oh, that's the most the money I've spent. Yeah, yeah. Do you invest in property? Yeah, I have like a few. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, then. What's the best advice you ever received? Best advice? Um, I think just advice, oh my God. I get a lot of advice on a daily basis. I think the best advice is um, trust the process and just don't give up. Like it's gonna get dark sometimes, like really dark and you're just gonna, you're gonna think you're never gonna make it, but just trust that it's gonna happen, whatever's meant to be. Mm. What's the worst advice you ever remember receiving? Slow down. <laughs> I hate that advice. Like, I remember someone was like, slow down, you're gonna burn out. You know, just take your time with it. I was like, no, I don't, I don't wanna, I, I hate that. Mm. Like, when someone tells me to slow down, it really irritates me. <laughs> it bothers me, you know, like, I don't wanna slow down. Yeah. What's your biggest failure? Uh, biggest failure. My biggest failure is probably just in my friendships and relationships. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's being honest. They're all uh, fucked, but you're making yeah. loads of money on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, just that's something I need to work on definitely. Yeah. What's your biggest regret? My biggest regrets. Uh, I don't really have many regrets. I think not buying enough Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, my biggest regret. Hmm. I think the only regrets I really have is just not spending enough time with the people I love. So, yeah. Mm. Would you rather have two million new subscribers or five million dollars cash and why? I'd say five million dollars. I think with that five million dollars I could get a new two million, if not more. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just know how to do it, I guess. Yeah, interesting. And this show is called Disruptors. Yeah. What does disruptors or disruptive, what does that word mean to you? I've got the t-shirt up there for my next disruptive. interview. Um, yeah. I think it's just like changing the game, right? 
doing something that others won't. Yeah. So keep disrupting. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And where can we follow you? Maybe YouTube. Oh, you got a, you've launched your podcast, oh, haven't yes. you? Oh, yes. I completely forgot, guys. <laughs> uh, I have a podcast. It's on YouTube right now. Uh, it's called Vibes. Oh, I uh, think that's a great name, by the way. Yeah. It's, Vibes. Uh, I'm all about the vibes. Like, I generally... I, my whole thing is just if I have a good vibe with people, that those are the people I want to be around. So yeah. it's good vibes. Have some more podcasts coming soon. So check it out on YouTube. And um, your main channel, is that called Mo Vlogs? Yeah, we've got Mo Vlogs, Arabic Mo Vlogs. We've got Mo Luxury. Um, well, hopefully we reach a, yeah. a nice global audience for you. We've got exactly. more, more Brits um, on our channel than any other yeah. following. Is yours more people in Dubai or is it uh, international? International, I'd say. Um, UK is like probably number five on that list. Oh, okay. So, yeah, four or five. Something Great. Like that. All right. Mo, well, it's been a real you. pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you. Hey, so before you go, let me know in the comments, what did you think of Mo? What a cool guy. Young little bastard. Are you jealous? Let me know in the comments what you thought of Mo Vlogs and the content shared in this episode.